let's talk now about trade directions. It seems like it's all over the map everywhere you go. Here are 10 things I want you to know about what about the direction of trade, especially when major trading partners our focus is going to be really on the United States, since that's where we're located at. But that said, we're talking about our partners as we go through, and the partners are not always people that are always our friends. Sometimes a trading partner is people that both sides benefit financially from, but we'll see sometimes you don't always have to agree with them 100% different things. Really, there's a favorable business climate about importing. Even though we go through a trade war where there's tariffs erected, there's embargoes on this or whatever is going on in the world, sometimes business people always find a way. Once upon a time, we had, once upon a time, about four years ago, we started a whole trade war with China. In the process, let's stop, we'll put tariffs on Chinese goods coming in. Well, if you were a business person, a lot of people, they sat there and they moved their factories out of China and they moved them over to Cambodia and Vietnam. Other times, they actually sat down there and they had a the, the goods shipped from China to Brazil, which had a most favored nation status with the United States, and there were no tariffs coming in. So instead of shipping directly to the US, yeah, it took a couple of days longer. They shipped it to Brazil, and Brazil put a different label on it, shipped it back to the US. The price went up maybe 4%, and boom, they had a whole pathway rerouted, and everybody kind of turned a blind eye, even though we all saw it happening. So even though sometimes you see countries getting all hoppy poppy about putting, oh, they're really a bad company, you'll see businesses finding ways to get around when they want to, unless the government really wants it to stop altogether, and then they can sit down and do a full-blown embargo. So a lot of regulations, import and export, really are improving, okay? They also have, there's no longer major strong cultural objections to buying and importing goods from nations as you go through. A lot of countries have a lot of improvement in transportation facilities. The, probably the biggest aspect of it really has come to shipping. On shipping, the, having ports meet state of the art is a big, big issue. In the United States, we're still struggling with shipping as it hits the West Coast and it travels across the country as we go through. A lot of times your import channel members, like the people that work with the process, the merchants, the banks, and the customs brokers, they really make a large amount of business. If you truly are a novice in the process of trying to bring things in from another, another country, you can always find people that assist you and they don't always shake you down for massive amounts of money. My first experience in actually bringing goods into the country in a substantial amount, I ended up having to sit down and use the four different people involved in the process, anywhere from a foreign inspector. I had to make certain I had shipping insurance as you went through because the manufacturer only guaranteed it up to loading. What if the ship went belly up? What if the cargo did for all the ship? You have to have insurance for that. It came into the customs yard, and then you have three days to make sure you claim it or find, pay a storage fee, and then you had to pay your tariff. So that being said, sometimes you have to sit down and find multiple people to assist you in the process. You also have a lot of aspects when it comes down to currency from the foreign country to pay for it. How do you go about paying for things? Do they take Venmo even in the process? Okay, do they take PayPal? Okay, can you have a different aspect of it? Because other countries don't always have those applications and, or can you take a charge card and do you trust them to take your charge card in the process? So, so think about some of the directions of that in case this is gonna be involving you. Sometimes governments apply a lot of pressure. We're gonna import all these goods from you. We want you to buy our goods too. If you don't, we're gonna do bad things to imports that's always an applied threat and it's always out there. And every once in a while, governments actually say those words openly. But that being said, you see what happens. So a lot of our trade partners, if you look at the top 10 trading partners as countries, they kind of were more than half of all the exports into our country and 70% of all the imports in 2017. We really have an overall trend that developed nations and members are doing a lot of trade agreements when it comes down to it as well. You'll see, we had an old trade agreement called NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement. We revised it and really finalized in 2019, and we now call it the USMCA. That trade agreement really has changed the nature of trade with the United States. Before, almost for two full decades, we had China being our number one trade partner, especially when it comes to importing goods into the US. After that trade agreement, China dropped to number three from number one, our number one U.S. partner as of the time of this recording is Mexico. Second is Canada. 
both partners in the USMCA trade agreement. So you have that sitting out there and China has now gone to number three. Mexico is now a major trading partner and hopefully in the process will help up, up the lift Mexico's economy as well and actually improve the overall status of Mexican citizens and make them more prosperous as part of the overall North American community as you go through. But you'll see different aspects of it, different trading partners as you start building alliances as you go through. When you start talking about trade, you want to talk about trade deficits and trade surplus. The U.S., you, we already saw the numbers, we really do a lot of importing we don't do as much exporting of goods or services when on, on the balance sheet by the time it's all done. That being said, we always tend to be a trade deficit country where countries like China, which have a massive merchandise shipping capacity and manufacturing capacity, they have a tend, tend to have a trade surplus when it comes down to it. So we talk about trade directions. We're talking about having US trade partners. We're talking about the cultural stigma being reduced we're talking about the infrastructure, the enhanced trade has been approved a lot, and channel members now have a lot of experience and currency has been standardized as to how we go through and have different directions on trade. Take care.